नमस्कार माय डियर फ्रेंड्स लेट अस ट्राई टू डेवलप द कंप्लीट सर्किट यूजिंग एस टी एम थर्टी टू माइक्रो कंट्रोलर सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन द ओवरव्यू ऑफ एस टी एम थर्टी टू माइक्रो कंट्रोलर द टारगेट डिवाइस वाज एस टी एम थर्टी टू एल जीरो फिफ्टी थ्री आर एट ओके सो इन दिस सेशन वील ट्राई टू डेवलप द कंप्लीट सर्किट ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर डिवाइस सो बिफोर दैट लेट मी जस्ट आउटलाइन द टॉपिक्स दैट विल बी कवरिंग इन दिस सेशन सो द टॉपिक्स दैट विल कवर इज the microcontroller device symbol how we can design our power supply programming on debug we will be resetting this uh, we will be designing reset circuit boot loader and boot mode will be there then we'll be trying to connect leds push buttons dip switches we'll also see how to connect uh, uh, various you know like uh, voltage uh, <coughs> monitoring systems to our adcs then pwm generations we'll try to interface uh, several temperature sensors in this session ir receiver we will try to understand how we can connect to our microcontroller we will also interface i uh, e prom using i2c communication interface then we'll also see how we can connect uh, you know like a magnetic buzzer for our uh, beep application or like alarm application we'll have some external interface also where we will be having some connector and some of the interfaces will be coming from that board we'll also see how we can convert to rs232 rs485 multiplexer switch we'll also see we'll also understand how we can interface ur to usb bridge okay some other persons uh, some other parameters we will see is uh, how we can utilize external adc for uh, various monitoring systems we'll generate one v reference also with uh, external voltage reference ic we'll also interface uh, ntc that is negative temperature coefficient which is generally used in lot of industrial applications we'll also see applications related to ambient light sens light sensors and pressure sensors so with this all these topics we'll try to understand one by one with our particular uh, microcontroller circuit so let us directly get into the uh, device so this is the complete microcontroller uh, you know like uh, symbol design so i have you know arranged all the symbols uh, all the pins in port wise so you can see pa0 to pa15 then pb0 to pb15 then we have pc0 to pc15 then we have pd2 ph0 ph1 we have boot mode here boot pin with nrst pin that is reset pin all the power pins are clubbed together here and all the voltage supply pin uh, ground pins are connected here okay now i have named all the you know like pins name like ambient sensor pressure sensors ur2 tx all these things will be actually discussed one by one while we try to interface this so this is one of the way to uh, make your symbol either you can you know like uh, populate almost all the functionality of the pin or you can have just pa0 pa1 pa2 like that so that uh, the symbol doesn't look like very uh, you know like complicated and it will be very uh, neat and clean and whatever the functionality that you are going to put it let's say i2c scl and i2c sda like i2c interface then you have to search in your data sheet and put it otherwise here it is very easy to see this particular pin function is having i2c1 underscore scl so i2c and i2c this these two pins are for i2c pin same way you uh, you can uh, see other pins also so it becomes very easy if you populate all functionalities in the pin pin names otherwise you will have to go and see in the data sheet so this is the microcontroller symbol that we have understood and how we have named all the nets okay now let us try to understand how we can design power supply for this because power supply is very important so power supply what i have taken is i have taken one external connector which is going to give us one voltage which will be coming up let's say a uh, 5 volt or even more will be fine no problem at all and then uh, this is going to go through a fuse and it is also you know like uh, uh, clamped with a tvs diode with with a 5 volt rating okay and then this is going to convert to a linear regulator this is my linear regulator so this linear regulator is going to give me output of 3.3 volt okay so this linear regulator is very popular tlv 3117 this is from texas instrument and it is uh, having a sot 23 package okay so sot 23 package is bit uh, smaller compared to to 263 uh, 
देर आर अदर पैकेज ऑल्सो टी ओ टू फिफ्टी टू टी ओ टू सिक्सटी थ्री एंड अदर पैकेज दिस इज माई एस ओ टी टू ट्वेंटी थ्री पैकेज ओके सो दिस इज हाउ इट विल बी अनदर वन इज वी हैव वन मोर कनेक्टर दैट इज पुट हियर दिस इज नॉट ए कनेक्टर दिस इज जस्ट ए जम्पर यू कैन से जम्पर so whenever uh, there will be a usb connection that is your uh, laptop is connected then you can just connect these two pins so that it takes power from this particular usb and you don't have to connect the external connector okay so this is how you are going to have two power supplies either you can directly connect through your laptop or otherwise you can have external dc supply of 5 volt okay <coughs> it can take up to 15 volt range for that i'll have to make little bit change in the circuit because i have directly taken this 5 volt as vcc for other applications so in that case i'll have to you know like utilize another uh, let's say this becomes my vcc if it is not 5 volt okay then what will happen is in that case my vcc i'll have to convert to 5 volt if there is some application of 5 volt and one more led i'll have to utilize so this is a method to you know like uh, utilize in your circuit and this is how you you approach based on the requirement of your particular application okay so if you have regulated supply from external source which is of 5 volt this is very well suited it is very easy to go ahead so this was all about power supply for the uh, you know like uh, uh, this particular microcontroller now our aim is to supply this particular you know like a power supply pins that is vdda pin and vlcd pin vdda pin all these things so for that we have to have some decoupling capacitor so this is called decoupling capacitor so uh, how many number of vda vdd pin is there that many number of 0.1 microfarad capacitor that you have to utilize utilize and make sure all the in your layout pcb layout you have to make sure each of the decoupling capacitor must be close to their respective vdd pin okay and this is one of the bulk of 10 microfarad capacitor now for vdda pin i have utilized one uh, 100 ohm ferrite bead okay this is my fb ferrite bead and same vdd is going to vdd a and it is going to get connected to vdd a supply okay and same way for vlcd i have connected one external capacitor which is of 0.47 microfarad and this is going to get connected to my vlcd pin so this is how complete <coughs> you know like package of power supply connection is done so you can see vdd all these four pins will be there which will be pin number 19 pin number 32 pin number 64 and pin number 48 okay same way vlcd and vdda so respective to those pins you have to connect their coupling decoupling capacitors closer to them so this is another method now coming back to the programming connector so programming is very important for that first of all what i have done is i have utilized boot mode so you can connect this boot pin or let me just make it little bigger for you okay so this boot pin will get connected here and this 10k is pulled down okay so this is one method i have just given one 680 ohm which is pulled up but it is not used okay so in some cases if there will be a requirement of you know like uh, pulling it high then you have to put it together another pin is this is reset okay so this reset circuit is going to be somehow in the manner of i had told you that there is internal pull up already there so you don't need this one but for safety side i have only always recommended people to utilize the internal you know like i mean external pull up resistor for nrst pin okay <coughs> so if it is not pulled up your device will not switch on so this will go to nrst and 0.1 microfarad i had told you that time uh, will parallel to the push button switch so push button switch uh, once it is pulled uh, you know like pushed then there it will get grounded and this is how it it will uh, reset the microcontroller device okay now coming back to the programming connector so programming was only two pin was required one was swdio one was swclk that is swd programming okay so for that i have utilized six pin connector which is going to be one pin is your power supply and another one is your ground and two more are one is your swclk and swdio so that is total four pin one more i have utilized is nrst pin and pb3 pin i have used because earlier it was you know like being used for some swo purposes okay which is actually used in some other devices but right now here it is not needed okay so if you want you can connect it to pb3 otherwise you can not mount it this particular resistor so that it will not get connected okay so this is how it will work out now here i have changed my uh, you know 3v3 to vdd 
so if you want to utilize your VDD source so that you can always use with this resistor uh, either you can use 3v3 or otherwise VDD both are almost same okay good so this was all about programming then decoupling capacitor and power supply design now coming back to the uh, main design of you know like microcontroller peripherals. so first of all there is a requirement of connecting LEDs okay so I have used here user LED 0 user LED 1 two LEDs are there two push buttons are there and two dip switches are there and one more user LED is there so total three LEDs are there so these three you know like different kinds of uh, LEDs push buttons and dip switches will try to connect in different fashions okay so let us move to the connection of LEDs okay so what you can do is you can directly connect to your MCU pin okay to your LEDs and connect a resistor through your LED so whenever this MCU pin goes high this particular LED will start glowing okay and whenever it goes low it will not glow same way D5 LED is well, will also work okay so this is one way another method is let's say you have a requirement of very high current LEDs which is used for uh, some uh, power application or something like that in that case what happens is uh, the microcontroller IO pin or microcontroller GPIO may not be able to source that much amount of current so for that I am going to use directly the power supply and connect it to the LEDs okay and instead of using the uh, microcontroller pin as source pin or sync pin I am going to use just as enable pin through a MOSFET okay so this MOSFET will try to uh, you know like switch on as soon as you make it high so this gate will uh, charge and it will switch on and from drain to source the current will start flowing and this is how this LED D7 will start glowing okay so there are various kinds of LEDs like uh, uh, we have uh, uh, <coughs> you know like uh, uh, through hole LEDs or SMD LEDs or something like that so any LEDs you can utilize anyway I have given a lot of part numbers uh, for general application LEDs uh, from Worth Electronics okay so Worth Electronics I feel is one of the uh, best manufacturer for LEDs, push buttons and dip switches and all these things. So you can utilize lot of part numbers that is already given or if you need a part number for your particular application uh, in your circuit you can put down your queries in the comment box and I shall be able to answer you out. Now let us move to the uh, push button and dip switch. So push button what I have done is <coughs> this 3v3 directly getting connected to the push button so what will uh, my uh, user pb0 will see high at this time okay now as soon as this uh, push button is pushed down okay so it will get connected and this is how it will become grounded so my uh, mcu pin will see low okay so as soon as my mcu pin that is user pb0 sees low means i will see my push button has been pressed okay the the button has been pressed and that way I can take a decision of let's say glowing some LEDs based on the push button of uh, you know like press push button of S6 or same way S7 also if it is pushed how you how you are going to take a decision for different work that you can take up okay either uh, some of the times you know like these push buttons are used for some interrupt applications so once it is pushed you can power on something or you can you know like take some decisions based on some alarm or something like that okay another very important one very powerful you know like uh, application is dip switches so what happens is this dip switch I am connecting to the user dip switch 0 and the user dip switch 1 okay so right now let us say uh, the dip switch you can see dip switches are like this uh, this red ones I can show you okay so if it is pushed up it will be on if it is pushed down it will be low so, so let's say it is pushed down it means it is low okay so my microcontroller pin user dip switch 0 is going to see a low okay now as soon as it is pushed right side it will uh, pulled high so it will become high so this is how you are going to have you know like a f uh, with these two uh, push buttons I mean uh, dip switches you can have four uh, four parameters like 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 so there are four status that you can display with this particular you know like dip switches either you can have uh, you can set both of these uh, pins of microcontroller permanently 0 0 or 0 1 or 1 0 or 1 1 and based on these four combinations you can take some decisions okay so you have a lot of push buttons uh, from uh, worth electronics okay and a uh, lot of you know like uh, deep switches are also there from worth electronics i am showing here uh, eight number of you know like deep switches but you can have like two one four six 
any number of you know like deep switches uh, that will be there in one package all right so good uh, we have completed our leds we have completed our push buttons now let us talk about some external applications and adcs okay so what i have done is i have external interface like six pin connector which can be of you know like header type or maybe if you want you can use this uh, box type connector okay so i have given the part number for you so that you can connect this and this six pin it is going to do something like this that vdd that is my 3v3 is going to supply to the external board okay that is one thing ground is also connected so that you don't have to uh, have a issue of grounding to other board now there is a enable pin that is coming from microcontroller and going to the external board so which will enable the external device or target device and suppose that device has been switched on or off that signal is coming from that device and is going to my microcontroller so this is going to indicate whether it is on or off okay so based on that you can take a decision of of the microcontroller for sending some signal there is one more parameter which is you know like going to get uh, uh, I mean measured that is ADC so ADC is zero it is going to get measured some of the parameter there is a PWM requirement okay to the other target device so PWM I am generating from my microcontroller and I am sending it to the target device so this is how you are going to interface your external device to this particular microcontroller now you can see we have ADC zero so ADC zero what I have done is I have passed it through a uh, buffer and this buffer is going to go to one low pass filter and this low pass filter after that i am going to send it to adc in 9 okay so this adc in 9 will be taking it to uh, my microcontroller <coughs> one more adc i have connected here is vdd which is going to be 3v3 or 3.3 volt so this i have uh, you know like uh, divided it voltage division 30 kilo ohm and 20 kilo ohm you want you can you know like uh, reduce the uh, I mean uh, resistor value so that the current rating will be a little bit higher but uh, there is no need at all okay if you are if you will keep little lower then it will consume very less current anyway I have kept one uh, uh, <coughs> op amp which is going to serve as a buffer and this buffer will send it to ADC in 8 and this is how this particular ADC is going to give you the voltage level or it will be actually used for the power monitoring okay <coughs> So what is the level of your 3v3 on your board in this particular device that you have designed uh, this will this particular ADC will keep measuring and giving it giving it the result okay okay so this is how you can you know like connect uh, your ADC pin uh, based on the uh, decision of how much uh, uh, I mean how what is the voltage rating that you have to measure at different different ADC locations so I have utilized ADC channel 8 and channel 9 for these two ADCs there are other ADC channel also channel 1 2 3 4 all are there that has been used for other applications or other purposes that we'll see in the next uh, sessions now let us take out talk about another application I am going to utilize one IR sensor okay so this is my IR receiver uh, this is from Visa so this Visa IR sensor receiver is actually TSOP13436 this is a very popular device so whenever it receives some uh, signal okay it will generate one output and this output is going to go to PB2 of my microcontroller and this will go high uh, based on the as soon as it received some signal uh, what will happen <coughs> this guy as soon as it receives some signal let's say you have pressed one uh, your uh, one of your uh, <coughs> let's say a remote or something and in that case uh, it will receive something and it will send you to uh, output and this output will trigger the uh, GPI of MCU and based on that you can take some decisions okay so I am not explaining the circuit design right now of this particular IR sensor receiver uh, because we have already explained lot of other tutorials my previous tutorials are there still if you have any requirement of uh, you know like uh, circuit design how to design this particular 1k or like uh, capacitors and all that we can talk about in our queries okay so anyway any of the circuits that uh, is connected uh, in the interface I will not be explaining it just I will be giving you the examples right now because we have if you want uh, uh, all the circuit explanations you can see my previous videos that is given in uh, microchip uh, devices also like I have taken PIC microcontroller PIC 16 AF and PIC 18 AF microcontrollers okay so in that series you I have explained very deeply how the circuits are designed so same way we'll be seeing other circuits as well let us talk about another application which is going to be uh, used as 
temperature sensor so I want to sense my temperature uh, on the board so let us say this is the uh, you know like TC1047 device <coughs> so this particular device whenever you know like uh, it, it sees the power like whatever the temperature that is coming based on that it will generate one output voltage and this output voltage is being you know like incremented for each degree centigrade 10 millivolt okay so 10 millivolt per degree centigrade this gives you the you know like output and based on that it will give you the output voltage and this output voltage is going to go to my temperature sensor 1 of my ADC and this ADC pin will give you the uh, you know like voltage level and based on that you can decide what is the temperature on in that area where it is you know like put or where it is placed <coughs> so on your PCB uh, this particular device will be placed somewhere and that particular uh, you know like area temperature will be measured okay if you want bit lower cost uh, maybe the, the same device can be utilized or you know like replaced by Texas instrument device also which is actually uh, you know like TMP 235 okay so this is also SOT 23 package and exactly same application it is also going to give you 10 millivolt 10 millivolt per degree centigrade output so if you want you can see it you know like a transfer characteristic table and I'll just quickly show you how it gives you so let's say it is going to you know like give you a temperature range from minus 40 degree centigrade to uh, 150 degree centigrade okay and you can see at minus 40 degree centigrade it is going to give you 100 millivolt value okay and as you go minus 35 it is going to increase by 10 into 5 that is 50 millivolt so 150 millivolt it will give you so let us say your board temperature is 40 degree centigrade you will be seeing 900 millivolt output okay and let's say it is 41 degree centigrade then what will be the uh, value of your ADC uh, I mean input that will be 910 millivolt so this is how it will be coming okay <coughs> good so temperature sensor you have understood uh, I'll be talking about one more temperature sensor uh, so generally this SOT package was there right uh, just now I showed you SOT uh, 223 so what happens sometimes is uh, sometimes this package is not available okay so in that case uh, generally we go ahead with SC70 package so SC70 package is abundantly available and this is also from uh, you know like Texas instrument only and exactly same application as SOT23 okay so <coughs> this will also give you the same result so if you want to utilize this particular device for your temperature sensor application on your PCB board it is one of the best uh, use and instead of directly sending it to the temperature uh, output 3 to your ADC what you can do is you can uh, you know like uh, skip this okay and you can go ahead and put this as you know like buffer and after that you send it so this is always recommended like buffer it and then send it to your temperature sensor output 4 so this is another method to uh, have a better application of your temperature sensor sizes there is a very popular IC for temperature sensor application in many thermometers and also that is also put here so if you want you can utilize like this that uh, this can withstand 5 volt as well as 3.3 volt both so LM35 is one of the best uh, uh, temperature sensor output IC so this is going to give you again temperature sensor 2 this is going to get connected to your uh, one of the ADC line so you can see there are several ADCs that is needed okay and that's the reason I'll show you why we need external ADC for <coughs> these applications anyway we have total 16 number of channels so if you want to utilize your microcontroller ADC only to you know like uh, measure all the ADCs then you can connect each of the channel with this particular uh, ADC uh, lines okay so that is one of the things now the other best application is I2C so any MCU there will be a need of you know like I2C uh, uh, communication interface so in I2C a communication interface you can see we have I2C SCL line and SDA line that is your I2C uh, you know like clock line and data line and <coughs> you can directly connect it to your SCL and SDA lines okay now the thing that is done here is generally I have always utilized near the microcontroller we, you will be having pull up resistor so this will be uh, like this okay so let's say this is my VDD VDD okay and let's say based on the uh, you know like a speed that is needed uh, let's say this is my 4.7 kilo ohm and this is also 4.7 kilo ohm 
so if your pull up resistor is not put in the microcontroller section what you have to do is you have to put here okay and if it is put there then you don't have to put here so there will be always a need of uh, pull up resistor in the i2c application okay so i2c application what i have done is i have pulled up this particular resistors as you go on increasing the resistor value okay let's say you make it to 6.8k or 10k your uh, you know like speed will decrease okay let's say it becomes 100 kilohertz or something like that and as you go on reducing let's say you make it to 2.2k or 3.3k something like that its speed will go up to around 1 megahertz okay so <coughs> the microcontroller capability for uh, this particular i2c application is up to 1 megahertz so in that case you have to reduce the value of your resistor okay so this is another application now a very powerful uh, technique put to you know like uh, uh, have an alarm in your board okay like beep 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 sound or maybe you know like something happens let's say temperature uh, become a little bit higher compared to uh, let's say it become 50 degree centigrade and you want to have some alarm in that case what you can do is this is one of the best buzzer that is from cui okay cui devices so what i have done is uh, one buzzer uh, line will be line will be coming here at the uh, base of the transistor instead of transistor you can utilize mosfet also so you can use a mosfet normal uh, you know like npn mosfet uh, sorry n channel mosfet uh, you can utilize bss 138 okay or 2n7002 also you can utilize okay <coughs> 2n7002 these are very popular devices and this is my drain which will get connected to your you know like uh, this is my collector base and emitter okay so drain will be get connected to your collector gate will get connected to your base and uh, source will get connected to the ground or emitter okay so you can replace your transistor by the MOSFET as well. Now uh, this buzzer is going to develop one PWM. So uh, this PWM signal will be coming from your microcontroller. Okay. And this microcontroller PWM signal is going to have 2.7 kilohertz. Okay. Uh, the <coughs> uh, frequency and I have kept a 50% duty cycle so that it gives you a proper result. Okay. Now I have since uh, base requires just 0.7 volts, so I have put uh, voltage division here so that it comes around 3.3 uh, volt by 2 that is 1.65 volt that is more than enough to switch on this particular base and this is how it will start beeping okay so this is the way it works. I have given the requirement of this uh, particular diode which is needed this is called free filling diode and this is recommended by the manufacturer for this particular design there are some uh, you know places where this particular uh, other type of buzzers are there where they need a uh, resistor so i have given a provision for resistor also so if there will be a need of resistor you can uh, remove this diode and put the put back this resistor and this is how there will not be a need of uh, you know like a requirement of another pcb design the same pcb will be applicable to run that particular buzzer as well okay so hope you have understood how we can design the buzzer connection okay for our alarm and this will be my PWM output that will be coming from the uh, microcontroller pin okay now let us connect one uh, NTC so I am going to you know like have one NTC negative temperature coefficient resistor so this one is going to you know like uh, <coughs> measure my temperature of the device and this is very sturdy you can see this can be connected to the body of the uh, you know like let's say some environment or some industrial uh, device okay and these two pins will get connected to the uh, connector of the inputs okay so here actually this is going to get you know like de uh, develop based on the temperature there will be a de temperature uh, you know like uh, there will be resistance uh, that will be varying based on the temperature and this is how you will be generating one voltage at this particular node which will be let's say vx and based on this vx this is going to go to this buffer i have given a provision for uh, you know like uh, putting some uh, gain as well but right now i am using as a buffer so because this is zero ohm and this is not used so this buffer is going to go to my temperature adc of the microcontroller and this is how it is going to give you the uh, particular <coughs> temperature value based on the voltage that it has sensed okay so as my temperature decreases the resistance increases as, as my temperature uh, let's say temperature increasing resistance decreases and temperature decreases resistance increases okay 
so this is how it works and i already have explained very you know like detailed of this particular ntc which is used from uh, visa and again okay and how my temperature was varying and how my adc will vary based on the uh, rt value change okay One more uh, application that I have utilized is pin photodiode. Okay, so this will sense your ambient, uh, you know, like light sensor. So as you see ambient light sensor, then this is one low pass filter that I have put. Okay, so in that case, and one more, you know, like uh, <coughs> LPF is here, and then it is going to sense your ambient sense to your ADC. So this is how it is going to measure the ambient light that is available inside your room. So let us say uh, in your uh, home application, a smart home application, if light is not there, then what will happen is automatically it will sense, okay, light is dim, then in that case it will switch on the lights, okay. So this is how you can utilize. And if a lot of light is there and still your, uh, you know, like uh, uh, LEDs or something is glowing in your home, then it will switch them off, okay, by considering what is the light amount that is available. So this is one of the best IC, best pin photodiode uh, that is used in industries or, or you know like uh, home light applications and all these things. <coughs> one more application in this particular design uh, I have given is pressure sensor application. So this is 30 psi pressure sensor that is from Honeywell. Okay. So Honeywell Automation is one of the you know like uh, uh, best company, best manufacturer for for sensor applications or sensor designs okay so this is pressure sensor and what i have done is the output voltage uh, output of this pressure sensor is going to go to the uh, amplifier and i have kept the amplification of uh, uh, around 57 okay so 57 times it will be amplified then it will pass through a low pass filter and then it will go to my pressure sensor adc and again it will <coughs> generate i mean uh, find out what is the pressure range so calculation and everything will be done later on right now i am going to give you the circuit design methodology okay so the supply voltage for this particular pressure sensor is 5 volt and this is how it is going to generate one analog voltage output this analog voltage output is going to go to uh, amplification and low pass filtering and then after that it is going to give you the output <coughs> Okay, so we have almost reached uh, uh, almost everything we have seen, lot of applications we have seen and we saw that we have ample amount of, you know, like uh, ADCs that is required to be measured, okay, in this particular uh, design, okay. So in that case, what we can do is we can utilize some multiplexer or something like that and we can send all these ADCs uh, values in at the input of that and then take output. So we will try to understand how we can use our external ADCs. So in that case, what we will be doing is we have let us say uh, you know like you can rename them based on your requirement so i have adc1 adc2 adc3 let us say you have a 1.8 volt in your application in your board you have 2.5 volt in your board uh, for 3.3 volt and 5 volt what i will do is i have written here 3.3 volt and 5 volt but what you have to do is you have to rename them in such a fashion that let's say 3.3 volt you generate it uh, uh, down convert it by uh, resistor configuration okay and this one will be let's say uh, 3v3 ADC okay this is how you will be generating so you connect this 3v3 ADC at this place and 5 volt also you generate again with another voltage let us say 5 volt uh, just put one uh, you know like a resistance division 5 volt and this will be 5 volt ADC okay so this will be going because you have to make sure the output voltage must be lower than the reference voltage of your ADC that I'm going to utilize. So my ADC which will be utilized is 3 volt reference, okay, VREF. So our aim is to keep the input voltage less than or equal to 3 volt, okay. And you can rename whatever the signals that you need. So total 8 signals you can pass it one by one. And what I have done is I have put this multiplexer as uh, MUX A0, A1, A2. So based on this selection, let's say 0, 0, 0 first line will be selected then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, uh, <coughs> second line will be selected so like that one by one each of the you know like lines will be going to the mux data and this mux data will be going to my next section i will tell you how it is work it is going to work okay so this particular multiplexer is taken from texas instrument okay ti so texas instrument is one of the best uh, manufacturer for uh, uh, ic's okay 
and they have very low cost multiplexers and this is one of the very powerful very popular uh, multiplexer device that is from Texas instrument and as you can see it has been supplied by 5 volt okay with 10 microfarad capacitor and 0.1 microfarad capacitor uh, which is acting as a filter capacitor kind of thing and it is permanently enabled like enable signal if you want you can control it enable and disable by the microcontroller IO pin otherwise for simple design what I have done is I have permanently enabled it okay another thing is these are the select lines so channel select line based on these selections you will be selecting which channel you want like S1 to S8 which one of them you want to route them okay so after one by one you will be putting it to them and generally uh, these kind of uh, scenarios are used in FPG application okay FPG application you will where you will be needing lot of ADCs to be measured okay and there there you have a flexibility of external ADCs uh, you know like uh, interfacing like how to generate some clocks or something like that okay and mm, like SPI interface as well but here also we have the SPI capability so we are going to utilize my external ADC alright so once we have understood like how we are going to route the ADC uh, you know like to be measured to our external ADC we will be directly jumping to our external ADC section <coughs> So in this external ADC section what is going to happen is this MUX data that is going to be measured as an ADC okay is going to get to the buffer and this buffer is going to go to my low pass filter again okay and this low pass filter is going to send it to again one more buffer okay. So this is like little bit higher in high in design okay so uh, this buffer is going to go to the input of my ADC okay so this is my ADC AD7684 this is my uh, I think it is 16 bit uh, ADC okay so this 16 bit ADC and um, negative I have just grounded because we don't have any negative uh, <coughs> input or any differential input okay so we this VANA that is analog input voltage is going to go to my input of this ADC and my DC clock is coming from the ADC clock of your microcontroller uh, SPI signal okay SPI CK signal something like that and ADC data is going to your SPI like a uh, mezo signal like master input slave output so this will be acting as slave so in that case you have to uh, connect it to mezo pin mezo master in slave out okay and ADC select that uh, SPI CS can be utilized as a select line so I have given you the interface of your ADC connection like ADC clock, ADC data, ADC CS and there was a requirement of reference voltage okay so this reference voltage has been generated from 5 volt to 3, 3 volt and this is ADR06 uh, you know like uh, uh, IC that has been used for generating 3 volt uh, voltage reference okay there are several ICs that is already uh, you know like uh, also available uh, with analog devices and they are actually used uh, uh, they are going to use you know like internal V reference so to have lower cost you can utilize uh, ADCs with uh, internal V reference voltages okay so this is how uh, you can utilize uh, the external ADCs for different applications like you have total 8 uh, you know ADC that has to be uh, measured and all these 8 can be uh, <coughs> I mean uh, uh, aligned and send it to the external ADC and it will give you the ADC data so let me just quickly show you how it is going to measure into your uh, microcontrollers so you can see I have the SPI signal which is SPI2, NSS, SCK, MISO and MOSI so data is connected to your SPI2, MISO and S ADC clock is coming from SPI2, SPI2, SCK and SPI2, NSS is going to give you the select line so this is how it is going to get connected okay so this can also work in your half duplex mode okay so <coughs> that is one more thing good so alright guys I think uh, 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 th th this is all uh, that we will be having in this particular session right now what we'll do is we'll try to understand more of the parts like uh, UART and you know like uh, uh, RS-232, RS-485 and USB all other applications in our next session uh, because we have a lot of other uh, you know like uh, uh, peripherals that is remaining so we'll try to cover in our next session those applications so if you do have any questions up to this uh, like uh, how to connect to the ADC lines or how to have some other peripherals like buzzers LEDs SPO uh, you know like uh, I2C EEPROM or LEDs and uh, you know like push buttons dip switches 
all these things how to find out you know like a power supply or how to have a proper power supply for your microcontroller so all these queries if you have any you can put down your questions in the comment box and i shall be able to answer you out thank you so much